This is a full game. And it plays like this. Bong, 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 bong. In this video, I'm gonna try to make games with just 10 lines of code. Th that's not a lot. Challenge accepted. This is only game one out of five, and each game we show you will be crazier than the one before. Yes! Yes! This video is sponsored by Game Maker, and the reason I chose Game Maker for this challenge was because it's so insanely fast to build stuff. My first ever video game, that was about 20 years ago, was made using Game Maker, and I recently released a game on Steam called Will You Snail, and I made it using Game Maker. Game Maker is the perfect choice if you want to make 2D games. That's why I recommend you click the first link in the description and try it out for yourself for free. Free! Free! Doing, doing. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. Here you go, 10 lines of code. This makes the duck fall, this makes the duck jump, this makes the duck rotate, this makes the duck die, and this makes the gates move towards you. Easy. What should we create next? Maybe something more difficult? <laughs> Let's build a simple level. The next game I made is a very original game that is definitely not inspired by any other games. It's called Break Up. Yeah. Okay, this is how the game looks so far. So nothing's moving, nothing's happening. Let's add some code. I'll put the code into the step event. So that's basically the update event that gets called every single frame. I'm gonna say x equals mouse underscore x. I think that's all I have to do to get the mat moving. So let's try that out. I can now move the mat down there by moving the mouse left and right. That's working as intended. Whee! Next up, I want to make the ball fall downwards, but I don't just want it to fall through the mat. I want it to bounce off of the mat. Place meeting X, Y, object mat. So that will make the ball bounce upwards and that will allow you to control the direction. Oh yeah, one more thing. I want the ball to bounce off of the walls as well. So I'm just gonna write move, bounce, solid. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. Okay, um, I think it's more or less working. The balancing is off. <laughs> speed 25 here and divide the speed by 8. Yeah, that's great. I like it. Now we'll save some more space like so. And now we have like four more lines of code if we want to. So basically that just checks if the destructible block is touching the ball. And if so, dang it, <laughs> I'm really running out of lines here. It's slowly starting to get more and more difficult here. I had to see what's possible with 10 lines of code. Like what can I realistically make? So slowly working my way up there. It's working. All bounces off these blocks. The collision behavior with like the blocks is not always perfect, but pretty reasonable for th for the amount of code we used. But I think we can take this a little step further because I also made these multi-ball blocks and I wonder if we can get those to work. I think I can save quite a lot more space actually by doing it like this. Oh my God, it looks so confusing. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's working so far. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh god, I can't juggle so many balls! Ah! I can't believe we did that with 10 lines of code. I can't believe it. Actually, I want to see if I can make these blocks look a little bit cooler. GameMaker has a pretty awesome built-in sprite editor, so I used that to give the blocks a bit more of a 3D-ish look. Then I put a screenshot of the game into Photoshop and painted a custom vignette, which is one of my favorite new tricks. Doing that by hand and adding some random sprinkles of color here and there really adds a lot of personality to the look. Okay, there we go. Not too bad, huh? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Whoa, there, there are a lot of balls there. Yeah, I'm happy with how this looks. Perfect. I'm gonna keep it like this now. Okay, new game. I now wanna make a game about fish. Wow. Game Maker was recently bought by Opera, and ever since, I think money has been flowing into Game Maker like crazy because they're adding features like crazy. One of the recent features they added are these cool effects layers, which you can just slap into the room and bam, you have a nice looking effect. One of the really nice looking ones is this water effect, for example. So I really wanted to make a game with water. I like water. Who doesn't like water? Okay, now in the step event, let's make Make the fish swim towards the mouse. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I like how this looks yet, but you can make them fly towards your mouse. And I don't entirely know if I like how that looks yet either. I probably don't. Bye, fish.
Okay, I made sure that they always face the direction they move and I can simply do that by setting the image angle to the direction and then I use this to add some damping to the movement so they don't get too fast and kind of slow down again. Then for the fish itself, I'm gonna try to rework that from scratch. I want a more green fish. Okay, already looks a little weird how they're all moving so synchronously. Oh, that looks cool though. Okay, I now added some randomization to the movement direction when you press the mouse and I did that just by adding some mathematical functions here to the point direction between the current position of the fish and the mouse. I spent an insane amount of time just on fine-tuning the fish movement. I just kept restarting and being like, oh no, 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 that's not like how fish move. This doesn't look like fish yet. No, I gotta change how they move. And I did that for like two hours. You can just keep tweaking the same lines like forever and for some reason it keeps getting better and better the more you do it. It's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, I played around with the look a bit more and I think it looks pretty dope as long as the fish are not moving too quickly. Looks fairly nice. Um, yeah, I, n I need to get some gameplay going here. I feel like um, fish movement is good enough. Let's make something with this. This was one of the games where I wasn't really sure at the beginning where I was gonna take it. That's always a very fun process when you're kind of surprising yourself with the end result. I just knew I wanted to make something with water and with fish. I added enemies and voila, there was a game that I didn't expect. I didn't plan to make this but what it ended up being was like a very weird zen like game that in some way feels kind of relaxing you know you control these beautiful fish you see the beautiful water and uh, yeah all of your fish get eaten by like super stressful piranhas that are like <laughs> and yeah the the coat i think turn out relatively long but not the worst <laughs> Okay, no, that was the longest line of code I probably wrote <laughs> during this challenge. Should I even try to explain this code? I feel like I probably couldn't even explain it to myself. Oh, my brain hurts. By the way, if you're wondering about the exact rules of this challenge, especially for all of those programmers out there who wonder why don't you just do it like this and separate everything with a semicolon, then you can write as much as you want in one line. Obviously, using semicolons is not allowed. GameMaker doesn't require you to use semicolons or anything that cheats you out of having to use a semicolon is not allowed either. So yeah, putting two functions right next to each other like this is not allowed. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. The only thing you can do is putting if clauses and functions next to each other and put putting functions inside of each other. Those are the rules. Uh, nerd stuff over and out. I have even more ideas, so let's see how far we can take this. Okay, let's make a car game. Oh god, that car is way too big. Now let's make the car move. There we go. This is one line and this should make the car move forwards and backwards. Okay, this is more or less what we wanted. I can press forwards and backwards. The only problem is it doesn't never stop moving. So actually if I, for example, accelerate it forwards and then stop pressing anything, it just keeps moving and moving and moving. Okay, this is like the most basic implementation I could come up with. With this code right here, I should be able to rotate the car to the left and to the right now. Oh, let's test that. Um, I know this is not how cars usually rotate, but we'll address that in a bit. So this is more, feels more like spaceship movement so far. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. Not bad. We can have a fully functional car now. Like we can drive in circles. We can go backwards. If I keep the right button pressed and I press forwards and backwards, I keep moving on the circle. So that's pretty much exactly how it would behave on a normal car. For the sake of testing, I added quite a large amount of drift. And as you can see here, I think it's working. Very cool. Then I even managed to make some cool car trails work from a performance perspective the solution I took for the for the car trails is absolutely horrible because I <laughs> spawn a ton of tiny uh, black objects basically to paint the trails but very efficient in terms of the amount of code I needed to do this I think I managed to fit this in one line yeah it's really fun actually <laughs> But we're not done yet. No, no, no. I have more ideas. I exceeded my expectations even more because I suddenly figured out, hey, wow, I can basically just by changing the balancing of the numbers change like, the behavior of the car. Make it feel like you're driving on a different surface or something. If we're colliding with the ice, we'll just multiply by question mark 0.99. Otherwise, we'll use the other value. 
That should work. Honestly, I could have added as many surfaces as I, as I wanted, but I decided to go only for a few. You move completely differently on all of these, but they all use the same lines of code. All I change is the numbers in those lines, and that makes it extremely efficient in terms of the number of lines I use. Okay, now this time I had to put the code into two different events. Here we have the seven lines for the car movement, and then in the draw GUI event, that's where you can draw stuff. I drew two health bars at the top, one health bar for how many collectibles you already collected and then here one health bar for how much time you have left and if you run out of time before collecting all of the collectibles the game restarts and go i'm gonna give it my best erp 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 <laughs> No! <laughs> I feel like making some kind of puzzle game now. I have actually no clue what I'm gonna make, but that's the fun of making a puzzle game. You can just get started and figure things out as you go. Maybe something with city building as well. I felt like this was not going anywhere for a long time. I was just messing around and it didn't feel great. I didn't know where I was going at all. I was just playing around. I had no plan for the game. I think next up I wanna get some sort of building preview going so I can see where I'm gonna build next. Something like that. I remind you so far we only have four lines of code and I mean yeah the alpha is pulsing a little too slowly but other than that pretty much everything works. That is pretty crazy. Okay next up I want a tile full of grass and flowers. Yeah, damn it. I forgot that it animates automatically. That's not good, but there's an easy solution. We just have to split it into separate sprites. One sec. Okay, time to test if it works. Can I build the house? Yeah. Can I build the road? Yeah, and I should get random objects to place now. That is cool. Okay, now we gotta worry about gameplay. Oh god, I'm about to do the unthinkable. I'm stacking three four loops inside of each other in just one line. I wrote a crazy complicated system for cellular automata. So basically everything you build starts spreading automatically. Oh my god, it crashed and gave an error message. And fitting that into 10 lines of code, it was such a nightmare. And then I played it and then it felt horrible because you, you felt completely out of control, right? When you, you basically have zero impact on how the finished thing looks like because you're only placing like the, these tiny little things and everything just boom, grows so much by itself. But then once again, that shows how much impact good balancing can have and just tweaking the numbers a bit. And I, I really believe after this challenge that we don't focus on that enough. The only thing I changed about the balancing is that stuff doesn't spread as quickly anymore and it felt so much better after that. Okay, now that the placement system is a little more fun, I wonder what happens if I just add more sprites to it. For example, I could add trees. I could also add some water or something. Let's, let's just see what's nice. And it was such a different game after that. Suddenly it really clicked. It was really fun. In the end, it turned out to be a creative builder but it still has that puzzle component because you're thinking i want this to look like this but then things also starts growing automatically so you kind of if you want something to stop growing you have to cut its way off or you have to make something different cut its way off by automatically growing there and it's becomes this really interesting game of, okay, where do I place stuff? Where where do I wanna put my creative intent and where am I fine with things just growing and spreading automatically? The game builds with you. It's basically a cooperative building game where the game builds with you. And that turned out to be really surprising fun. Okay, so this is the finished code for the builder game and it's crazy. We actually managed to do it with nine lines and I have no clue what to do with the last line. So we're just gonna leave it at nine. Uh, but yeah, some some of these lines are like oof crazy long holy moly oh it doesn't even end there it keeps going whoa imagine having to debug that wow yeah this is the best one that was probably the most fun I've ever had with any of the game dev challenges I've done so far. So thanks to Game Maker for supporting videos like this. If you want to support them back, click the link in the description to try out Game Maker for yourself. Try this challenge if you dare. Coding is not as hard as you think. And I'll see you in the next one.